Welcome back to EK Shop. Today I'm going to share some tips and tricks on working with desert ironwood. So today we are talking specifically about desert ironwood, which grows primarily in the Sonoran Desert. Outside of the knife making world, you don't hear too much about desert ironwood because it's relatively scarce and it's a, it's a small tree, relatively speaking. It is considered difficult to work and process on a mass scale, so you don't really see it too often. Uh, desert ironwood is actually the eighth heaviest wood in the world. It will actually sink in water on its own. Uh, I find it to be incredibly beautiful. It's very dense. Uh, it has a lot of natural oils. And it is one of the, if not the most, dimensionally stable wood there is. This stuff just doesn't move. Some pieces of ironwood can be pretty plain, but as you see here you can pick up some highly figured and very beautiful pieces online. So ironwood is a bit difficult to work. So the first thing I would tell anybody who's never worked with ironwood before is use very coarse and sharp abrasives when shaping the ironwood on a belt sander or a drum sander or anything of that nature. Desert ironwood likes to burn, so the coarser, the better. The slower you can run your sander, the better. You want to try to keep ironwood cool while you're working it. It will burn, and if it gets too hot, it's notorious for cracking. You can fix those cracks by filling them with super glue, stuff like that, but it's better to just avoid overheating the ironwood in the first place. Uh, desert ironwood produces a very fine and sticky dust, so you're going to want to get yourself one of these belt cleaner erasers in order to prevent this. It's going to clog up your belts and you're not going to be able to cut the ironwood and it's going to burn even quicker. So like I said, I recommend using one of these belt cleaners, do a little work on your belt sander, give it a clean. And make sure you're wearing a proper respirator when working any kind of wood, but especially these crazy exotic hardwoods that take decades and decades to grow. So that dust can contain funguses, and if you breathe that in, you can get fungal infections in your lung. So make sure you're wearing proper respiratory protection when working with desert ironwood. And I would say, do as much of the handlework as you can manually. Don't use a power tool. Save the uh, risk of burning this beautiful wood and do it by hand. and drilling ironwood. Now this is something I've personally never had a problem with. But some guys out there I've seen have had a little bit of trouble. For me, it's always pretty easy. Use a good bit, that's nice and sharp. Use a slower speed. Back it up with a cheap hardwood like oak. You should have no problem.
Now some guys will use a dull bit and they'll try to run the drill press too fast and you're gonna burn the ironwood. And on very thick pieces, just do a pecking motion to relieve uh, the material from the drill bit and you should be fine. But really, it's this isn't some crazy titanium alloy or hardened steel, it is still a wood. So drilling it isn't too bad. All right, and let's talk about cutting ironwood. So you can use these little cheap Chinesium grade bandsaws. They will cut it as long as you have a, like, I think this is a four tooth per inch blade. So rather aggressive. And that'll do it. But most of the time, I honestly just use a coping saw or just a little regular wood saw. The main thing you're going to want to look out for is that you're not using too fine of a toothed saw blade and that if your bandsaw is uh, variable speed, just choose a lower speed. It's a reoccurring theme here. The main problem with ironwood is it's, it's very tough, it's very dense, so it's harder to cut, it's harder to abrade. So our main risk with working with it is burning it. So let's talk about finishing iron wood. Now typically what I like to do with iron wood is I will take it all the way from a coarse 60 or 80 grit off my belt sander and I will take it up to 3000 grit wet or dry sandpaper. Uh, this is part of what is so appealing to me about desert iron wood. Not only is it fantastically colored, fantastically figured, dense, hard, dimensionally stable, but I find it easy to finish in that all you really need to do is take it as high up the grits as you want, and then give it a light buff, and you're pretty much good to go. Due to ironwood's density and the natural oils it contains in the wood already, you're not going to be able to use something like boiled linseed oil or birchwood Casey's genuine oil or true oil. It just won't go into the wood. At best, what's going to happen is it might cure on top of the wood. But that's pretty much it, and that won't look very good. So after you buff the iron wood, you can use a wax. You, know, you can use the classic paste finishing wax, or I am a huge fan of Birchwood Casey's Gunstock Wax. Other guys use Carnoba wax, whatever kind of wax you want, beeswax. They all have varying uh, advantages and disadvantages, but that's really all you need to finish ironwood. It's some time and some patience that's about it. This is at 3000 grit unbuffed and it just looks fantastic. You could even just leave it at that. I find that most people are amazed at how good you can make ironwood look even as low as 220 grit. The grain will just pop pretty much no matter what you do. I would say 800 grit is really when it starts to look really really finished. So over here at my bench grinder, which I mainly use for buffing, I like to use a loose cotton buff, and I like to use white rouge. Uh, this particular white rouge is 4max, and I like it a lot. I bought it off supergrit.com. But in, in, in this stage, it's just a light buff. I'm not putting a lot of pressure, and I'm trying to keep the heat away from the ironwood still because there's nothing worse than getting to this point and then cracking your ironwood from heat. Alright, and that does it folks. This is how I approach and work with desert ironwood. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button.
If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I'll be glad to answer them. If you have anything you'd like me to go over on video, let me know. I'm always open to suggestions. Until next time, I'll see ya. Thank you.